Okay. Uh, do the same for this side. So first position it. Tools, weld selected. Shift move to you get down. Shift move. That actually wasn't a bad one. Just bring it back a bit. Okay. Tools, weld selected. This is pretty much just making a frame for this entire thing. So, let's see, this goes there. So, rotate 90 degrees, then move. Move it into position. Okay, tools, weld selected. Shift, move this up. Shift, move this over. Finally, connect them with a weld. Alright, do the same for this side. Bring it down. Oh, that one worked very nicely. Alright. Now we have our cork board, which is UVW mapped. And okay, this also allows the sides to be um, mapped, and it allows for this material to be merged in the sides since we merged it right here. However, in your 2D program, what you're going to want to do is actually stretch the material right here. Um, pretty much every good um, 2D program will have an option for this. It's pretty much like an FFD modifier in Max. You can just take um, a point here and drag it over. This is so it's not warped. But we'll apply our corkboard texture to this now. You can also scale this up to get the most out of your texture. You want it to take up as much of this box as possible. So we'll just position that right here. Press M for materials. New uh, texture bitmap and we'll type hit corkboard. Now I just found these materials off Google. You can do the same or whatever you want. Does not matter. Alright, let's close these out. Exit isolation mode. And now you can see that we have our corkboard material, which is lower quality because it's in the viewport, on top or behind our um, paper material. So that's working out very nicely. Now we'll go on to UVW mapping these pieces here with chamfers, which, well, they do cause problems. So, what I like to do for these is add a UVW map first off. Go to box. And what that does is it fits a basic map onto this. And it's in the shape of a rectangle right now, or a beam, pretty much. And it encompasses the entire object. Now, um, when you go to unwrap UBW, you'll already have a base with which to work. So, as you can see, it follows the lines pretty nicely. You got some little triangles right there for chamfers, but overall, it's pretty good. So, go to edit. Let's just move this out of the way for a second. Face, control A, and let me show you a few of the other options as opposed to flat map. Unfold mapping, it pretty much takes a point and tries to not rotate it, but extend it from that one point, which is really good for um, cylindrical, spherical kind of bullet shaped objects. So I'll do that. Um, normal mapping, it takes a view, usually the um, right hand side or left hand side, and just projects it so that you have just two sides. You can change that but it's pretty much only good if you're working with flat objects that are not very 3D. So flat mapping is still the best option. Now, what this does is it again flattens everything out. So we have the front, the back, top, bottom, um, sides, and we also have a few pieces here which are chamfers of the sides. The good thing is the chamfers are already positioned in here. They're right on the edges. 
so we don't have to worry about those. This, this happens occasionally, but if it doesn't, all you have to do is it'll appear kind of up here as a really thin bar. Just click it, figure out where it goes, drag it down, uh, weld the edges, and you'll be good to go. But let's um, work on this. So we'll start with the front, and you can also press Grow, which will select pretty much all the faces attached to it. And it attaches this little corner piece, which we don't need right now. And you also have this piece, which I'm guessing is right here, but we'll just double check. It's not. All right, just press Z, see where it takes you. Uh huh. So it's the other corner over there. All right. Well, we can deal with that. So just kind of unselect all this and that, and drag it up. Next, select the top face, row, and deselect everything but the face itself. Make sure nothing's attached to it, and just drag it up here. Now what we have to do is figure out which edge goes where. And this edge is connected to here. So all we have to do is go back to the face option, it's already selected, and just move it into position. Just get kind of close, go into the vertex sub-object mode, select them, and weld selected. Do the same over here, getting kind of close, weld selected. And also, while we're here, we'll just kind of position this so it makes more of a triangle shape. It'll just help us in the long run. All right. Next, select this face, row. Deselect any other things we don't want. Okay. And I'm almost positive that this bottom edge here goes with the top one, and it does. It turned blue. So what we're going to have to do is flip this 180 degrees. So just do a quick rotate, and it's done. Zoom in here, and just position it. Vertex, just make sure they go together, and they do, they turn blue. Tools, weld selected, and do the same over here. Tools, well selected. And this is part of the triangle. We'll get to that. All right, now we have pretty much an unwrapped top portion of this. Next, let's do the sides. So click the side here. And let's see what we have attached. We have another side over here. And it looks like it goes over there. So select this whole thing, drag it over, press 1 to enter um, vertex, and this goes down here. So we'll just rotate that. Okay, move and position it. Alright, so as you can see, this attaches to this, this attaches to this. Select these tools, weld selected. And then for this, you're going to want to drag it so it's halfway. You can actually do the uh, shift drag. It doesn't work with uh, those kind of lines, though. So, tools, weld selected. And over here, I believe these two go together. And they do. So let's actually go tools, target weld, just drag that over. This also introduces pretty much a move option. And that is now unwrapped. Let's continue with this little piece. Press one, move tool. And this connects to up here. Right. So let's figure out exactly where it goes. 